Greetings, Halloween lovers. I am here with a funkin. These are atrociously named styrofoam pumpkins sold every Halloween at many, many craft stores around the world for prices of absolute absurdity, ranging anywhere from 25 to 40 and if you go on the website, the goddamn things are upwards of 95 to 100 bucks for a synthetic pumpkin. It's ludicrous. There's real ones out there that are much better, but if you must make your own insane contrivances, you can do so for far less cost. And I am here to show you how to avoid dealing with these fail coconuts every Halloween. And hopefully make something more cool, more artistic, and infinitely more sinister. So, here begins the tutorial and the quick demonstration of all you can create with a little bit of magic and some paper mache. Yep, they're all paper mache. Mm -hmm. Every last one of them. This is my first one. This is my second one. This is my third one. This is the most late recent one. And there are more on the way. Bigger ones. But they're all created with paper mache. I'm here to show you how. And the combined cost for making one of these guys with paper mache after your startup costs is a few bucks. They're dirt cheap. Granted, when you buy the nice big gallon of paint that you're going to use to make 50 of these, that's not as cheap, but you can cut your costs as you need to. But I'm going to show you how to create every single look you see here, from the veiny, cooly, frilly look to the standard, this is a pumpkin kind of look. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Alright, before we completely begin with materials and the process of making, a brief note about what it is you're creating. You're probably thinking to yourself, the first thing that I thought when I saw these suckers made. Paper mache? Are you out of your frickin' mind? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought too. And I thought to myself, no! Paper mache is to be way too flimsy! Like a rock. Completely and totally solid. Paper mache, when you put it on a Halloween night, it's going to get rainy and moist and damp and these things are just... and you're done. Ah, ah! No, no, no. They will be as waterproof as you choose to make them. This is going to splash all over me. I know it. As waterproof as you choose to make them. My first Halloween with these suckers they were out in the rain, and none of it's soaking in at all. You can put them outside. They can be sitting in the rain. I knew it. I knew it. And they will be totally fine. For size comparison, don't spill. Don't spill. Don't. Don't. Okay. For size comparison, there is a 12 inch ruler right here, which I had to add some masking tape to because the damn thing's clear. I thought I'll put a ruler there and then they'll see right through it and then there won't be a ruler at all. So here is 12 inch ruler. To give you an idea of the scale, these are small scale pumpkins. Again, this is the first one I ever made and I did not make it big. I should pose, but I won't. But you can make them quite large, quite large and chances are the more you make them, the larger they will get. <laughs> ah. Because you have to outdo yourself. Yeah, they can be made absolutely extremely huge. And again, as you make them, you can make them as waterproof as you want them to be. If they're gonna sit inside, you don't need to waste your extra time. Uh, some might ask at the moment, why is this one terribly shiny? I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. That's because I haven't given its final spray with the dulling down uh, matte varnish that I normally give, which these guys all have. No water. I love it. So, this is what you will be creating in your process. A resilient, sturdy, 
waterproof Halloween decoration that you can use for years and years and years on end. And during this video, I hope to solve one other interesting little question that's been nagging my mind about this particular method. I always see the fancy carved little things with the pictures of the Mickey Mouse and the whatever and the SpongeBob carved into them. And I am going to try to make one of these and carve one of those fancy moves into it and then see how well the design holds. I will probably try to use something relatively intricate because if it works with the most intricate thing you can get, then it's going to work with everything else too. All right, and so now we shall begin with showing you one other cool thing. If you master this method and you find it is awesome, you can do other cool stuff with it. And I have begun to start branching out because this stuff can be used to do almost anything. And so, we begin. All right, part one, materials. This is not everything you will need to make this stuff. No, don't, don't stop the video. I, I promise, it's not that bad. It really, really isn't. Some of the things that are here are actually just for convenience. You don't need them to do it, but it will make your life a hell of a lot more fun. I have, in fact, compiled this time a list of all the stuff that you need. because the materials section is my favorite and I never miss stuff that we're going to need later. I'm absolutely uncanny about it. So here's the stuff you're gonna need. Newspaper, it's paper mache, done. I need to clean. Get it anywhere, like the Norwich Penny Saver. Um, yeah, newspaper, duh. Grab it where you can. Recycling centers are fantastic. I usually have bales of this stuff. Flour! It's dirt cheap. Get it. It's good stuff. Glue. Okay. White glue. Standard white glue. Uh, if you can get a great deal, yeah, sure. Get these for your first time project. Fantastic. You need maybe a couple of cups worth of it. Uh, if you go absolutely insane and start making lots of these things like me, Elmer sells these great little gallon supplies, and you can just glunk all your glue right away. Liquid starch. If you can get liquid starch, as is commonly used for dishwashing, or rather not dishwashing, but laundry, go for it. If not, just grab some regular old corn starch. You can put about three tablespoons of this in per cup of water. Yeah, well, when I show you how to do it, I'll get the exact recipes right. But some regular cornstarch mixed with water boiled together will make liquid starch. But if you can get the stuff for uh, laundry, go ahead and get that. Another ingredient. Mixing bowls! Dollar store. Get two of them. Handy. Cheap mixer never to be used for food. Right. One of these uh, guys. Uh, Walmart, 10 bucks. Thrift store, less. Garage sale, haggle it down, get it even less. Tupperware plastic tubs, two to four. Again, dollar store. These are for storing your stuff in the fridge afterwards, once you make it. Uh, a couple of the substances you get. Obviously, since we're using flour, there's a danger of moldering. So you just put it in here. Cap it up, keeps it handy, keeps it safe from your food. So me use the same fridge for both. If you have two fridges, God bless you. You don't need my help. All right, paint brushes. A bunch of them, standard brushes. Uh, from nye to nye is about what you need. Just a couple, they're handy. Spar varnish. This is your waterproofer right here. This stuff will soak into the paper and make it damn near water invulnerable. This is one of the not cheap elements if you get it in the gallon like this. I have made easily seven pumpkins so far and some of them are huge and I've used about that much. So if you're just making one or two, you do not need a ton of this stuff. Consequently with all the other paints, I'm a nut. 
so I need the big size. If you're not a nut, you can go small size. But you can become a nut, and then you need to buy the big size. Okay. Black enamel paint, same thing. I've got yeah. the black enamel. And I've used about that much of it. Don't need a ton. Don't be crazy on your first time out. Um, blah, 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 blah. Acrylic colors. Yeah. You're obviously going to paint these guys, so you'll need some colors. Uh, this is insane size, again, but you can use the little standard... Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall! You can use the standard little ones like this for your first time. Only need a few. You're not going totally nuts with paint. You can, but... Alright. Mate Clear Spray. Right. Ha <laughs> Thank God. All right. This is the clear. This is not the glaze. This is the regular flat. It's the, not the glaze one. Yeah. This is the one that after you hit it with the glaze, uh, the clear matte spray will make it so your pumpkin is not shiny in the end. Like this guy. The last thing he was hit with was a layer of, come to think of it, was spar varnish that did that. It wasn't the glaze, but that will take the shine off. So people won't go, why are your pumpkins so shiny? Okay, cellulose insulation. If I edit this, I'm going to try to play the theme from Space Odyssey. Alright, hear me future self. If you can get that theme, go for it. If not, uh, put on like chicken dance or something. This is cellulose insulation. And this is what gives your pumpkins kind of the, the firmness and the substance. It is effectively just super shredded paper and little particles of plastic. It's all recycled material. Uh, you can get a whole bale like this. I don't know if that side has any more. Hey! Green fiber, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can get a whole bale of this stuff. I have this for about maybe 22, 23 bucks at a hardware store. I have made again seven pumpkins, one of them gigantic, and I have used exactly this much of the bale. It will last forever. If you can find anybody who's got it or is insulating their home with this stuff, just grab a garbage bag of it. You use about maybe two to three handfuls per batch of the clay material that makes up the bulk of the pumpkin substance. So, this is cellulose fiber. Oh. <sighs> cardboard! It's cardboard. All right. Garbage bags. These will be forming the outside skin of your pumpkin before you put your mache on top of it. And you're gonna take your garbage bag, fill it up with stuff, and that becomes your form work with. There are other methods apart from the garbage bag method, but this one is simple, easy, and works almost every time. Almost. Almost is a terrible word. Works every time. Promise. Okay. Rope. Twine. You can use twine. I like clothesline. I got this at a dollar store. 100 feet of it. More than you'll need for many, many pumpkins. It's very handy. Brown paper towel roll. You have many options. You can go to an institution and see if they have any spares. Sometimes custodial staff will get down to the last dregs of a towel roll and they'll just replace them and they'll have a whole bunch of little, maybe half quarter little bits of rolls left. Or you can just get a roll off of Amazon or somewhere or some hardware store. Uh, you do kind of need the cheap, flimsy, brown, papery, you know, orphanage grade hand wiping stuff. Could you do it with standard Scottel? Probably, but it's not worth the cost. Ah, oh, hot glue gun and glue. Because every crafty project needs a hot glue gun and glue. Drywall joint compound. This was about maybe 10 bucks or so. It is not terribly expensive. You need about two cups worth of it. 
and it's kind of a solidy stuff, so you scoop in a measuring cup. That reminds me, those are on the list. Damn it. Measuring cups. Uh, again, dollar store, get yourself a cheap set. I recommend getting a one scooper one. Mark it as something you will never use for food again. Incidentally, on that note, your mixing bowl and your cheap mixer will never be used for food again. So don't get one like, I'm going to bake a cake, and then I'm going to mix up paper mache stuff, and then I'm going to make another cake, and everybody will be wondering why the second cake tastes like drywall joint compound and fluff and glue. Hey, if you got crazy relatives, they might like it. Scissors! If you're a crafter and you don't have scissors, you're just insane. Uh, Dremel with zip cut. This is one that you do not necessarily need, but it will make your life a hell of a lot easier. This is after you have made your pumpkin completely paper mache and it's time to cut the face, and it's time to cut a hole in the bottom or a hole in the top as you see fit. If you've got a Dremel with a zip cut tip, it is going to make your life a lot easier. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there with an X-Acto or some other craft knife, patiently tugging away at it. It's going to take a while. I so need to clean and or get a bigger kitchen. I have a little game once I shut the camera off. I'm just going to move and see what falls over for a little bit. If it falls over, it was in the wrong spot. Uh, white latex enamel. And this is what you use for the inside of your pumpkins. It's a can of paint. White latex enamel. Wait. Latex and enamel are separate things. What idiot wrote this list? Okay, my original one was white latex. But you can use a white enamel. It doesn't really matter. Just get an outdoor white paint. Enamel's probably more waterproof. Go with enamel. Okay. Orange or yellow spray paint. So that, yeah. And some sort of scrubby, scummy clove that's ripped and torn and you don't really care about. This is my standard work smock. I don't care what gets on it. I just wash it out. It's not going to be going with me to any formal parties anytime in the future. So the standard scummy clothes. And that is my absolutely complete list of everything you will need to do this ever. It's complete. You won't need anything else. I swear. Yeah. Yeah, complete.